Okay, so earlier we, we looked at covalent bonding, and specifically we looked at, uh, at an example, or I think we, we did, or if not, um, you're perhaps familiar with methane. Methane is this molecule CH4. It's carbon with four little hydrogens bonded to it, and each of those little straight lines was a, a covalent bond. And so this this was uh, was fine. In fact, um, you know, even if we if we draw you know, this type of depiction here with little electron dots, and then we say let's add in some other um, something else like hydrogen. I'm just color coding it so you kind of get a sense for who or who's contributing the electron. Okay, and so the, the you know you do that, and then then you see well okay that's great we've got eight electrons, and that that made us happy. Well made the Carbon happy because it was octet stability. It you know it, it had this um, inert gas uh, or sorry noble gas electron configuration. But we need to be a little more careful, um, or it would be useful to us, I think, to to explore this in, um, in more detail. So this is really a two-dimensional depiction, two-dimensional. And again, it works fine. We're just adding up to eight. But if we look at the electron configuration for carbon in a little more detail, we know it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And so that was where we went and we said, OK, there's four valence electrons. So let's draw in these four electrons. But what we didn't do is differentiate between 2s and 2p. We just drew these four white dots. and in fact, in a way, what we did when we sketched this dot diagram here was we just pretended they're all kind of the same. Um, and really, there's actually a formal name for that that model, if you will. And that's what we're going to get into. So, so what we've got is we've got 2s, and we've got the... Actually, I'm going to draw that in a different color just for effect here. So then we've got 2s, and we've got... Um, 2p. That's uh, 2p. And so we said, well, we need to make four bonds. Why don't we just combine them together? So we'll take the 3p states and the 1s states. We get s, and then we've got p. And how many p's are there? There's three of them. We say, let's just blend them all together and start filling up. So then we've got the four electrons from carbon, and we can add one uh, each from, from hydrogen and, and get our four bonds. But we, to do that, we had to treat them the same. In fact, just to drive that home, I'll just draw them all in the same colored box. Not that the color of the box matters. Of course, you'll appreciate that. But we treat them all the same. So it's a blend. It's like, you know, if you ride a bike to work, and it's, it's a, you could ride a mountain bike. You could ride a road bike, a racing kind of bike, high pressure tires and all that, or a lot of people ride uh, a blend of the two. It's a, um, a hybrid bicycle, where you, know, you get two pieces of, uh, two species, of, uh, two species of, of fruit or something like that, and you blend them together to make something delicious and nutritious. Well, it's a hybrid. Um, so this is a hybrid orbital. It's a hybrid Orbital. And specifically, this one here that's taken 1s and 3p is called um, it's called sp3 hybridized. So that's sp3 hybridized. And so now we've got four bonds that are equivalent. There's nothing different about these. It's not like two of them are s and two of them are p. There's four equivalent bonds. And in fact, we can extend that out into um, predicting that, well, if there's just four of them, they're exactly the same. And then we want to go out into three dimensions. We would expect that there, there should be nothing really different between one of the bonds and any of the other ones. So if we take our carbon, and we draw these bonds out here. And I'm going to try to depict them in three dimensions here. 
Okay, so in three dimensions, going off to the hydrogen. Where this one is going, this, this guy here is going back into the page, and these two are kind of coming out. It forms um, this very common structure in chemistry. And if I make a little surface on that, like this, and then dot that in the back. This is a four-sided solid. Four-sided. It's called a tetrahedra. So the, that geometric solid is called a tetrahedra, or this is a tetrahedral arrangement of the hydro hydrogens around the carbon. Um, another way that uh, sometimes you can you can see this spatially and oriented in space is to take uh, one of my famous spheres here, and or infamous I don't know which. Maybe so I'm drawing this thing. There you go. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, as always, and. I'm going to position a little carbon or something right at the very center. And then each of the bonds is equivalent, so they should all go the same distance. So one would go up to here, perhaps. One would go out this way, and then this way, and the other guy would go off into the back. But they're all exactly the same bond length. And each of these bonded atoms to the central atom is at exactly the same distance from the central one. So that's another way of looking at it. Um, and you know that geometric solid that I drew there is another way that it's often drawn. And if I draw it without the stuff, without all the bonds, it's perhaps a little bit more clear. You can see the four sides. This this surface out here, one surface. Okay. This right side face is another. Okay. And then we've got um, you know that back face, and we've got the bottom face. One, two, three, four. Tetrahedra bottom. Okay, so that's that that uh, geometry, and it's really uh, actually a very important geometry in in in, um, in chemistry and in, in the world <laughs> because it shows up in a lot of things. In fact, carbon in diamond is also based on this tetrahedral arrangement, and again, it's because it's sp3 hybridized. It's just this time in diamond, carbon is bonded to four other carbons rather than four hydrogens. And anyway, again, this, this uh, symmetry shows up in other ceramic crystal structures as well. So it's a really important one to, uh, to understand. Historically, actually, the structure was known. The tetrahedral arrangement was known before people had developed the hybridized model and that was developed afterwards to explain this but we can kind of we have the, the luxury of seeing them together at this point and what we'll do in, in in separate topics is look at the structure of diamond in a little more detail um, and look at some other ceramic structures that have this tetrahedral symmetry to them